now. Okay, uh, welcome everybody. So uh, today we're very happy to have uh, Olaf from uh, Nordita and he will be opening a new chapter and telling us about integrability for ADS3 CFT2. Uh, please, Olaf. Thank you very much. Yeah, so today I will talk a bit about integrability in ADS3 CFT2, in particular about mixed flux ADS3 CFT2 and about crossing and, and, and dressing phases for this theory. So this is uh, based on work together oh, with Bogdan. Uh, it's still work in progress. So unfortunately, I will not be able to give you the full final answers today, but I hope, oops, I hope that I still will. Will you tell us where on the 24 dimensional manifold of parameters uh, your paper? That I will be, that, that I will, yes. <laughs> no. Okay. So here's a brief outline of my talk. But I yeah, assume you is, mean, sorry, 20 dimensional, but yeah, yeah. I'll come to that. <laughs> 24 will be tricky. Uh, you see my mouse pointer, right? So, yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so first I will give a general introduction to ADS3 CFT2 and, and particularly to this mixed flux background. So I will discuss a bit about the, remind you, do a bit a review about the various symmetries and, and what the representation theory of those are. And then I will focus a bit on, on the analytical structure behind the well, dispersion relation and the dressing phase and how it compares to the more familiar case of, of pure Roman Roman case, uh, flux or ADS5 CFT4. And I would, yeah, finish with some conclusions. So let's start. So I will be talking today only about string theory on ADS3 times S3 times T4. Uh, it's a background to preserve 16 supersymmetries. You could, there's also, as you probably have seen before, an S3 times S1 background instead of the T4. Presumably many things that I say are similar in that case, but this case is a bit simpler. So this background can be supported by Ramon Ramon fluxes, so three forms on ADS and S, or by the neighbor Schwartz and Schwartz fluxes, or by a mixture of the two. So you can come, because there are two, three forms in type 2B string theory, you can turn them both on at the same time and still preserve all the 16 supersymmetries. And our goal is to use, well, in the end, use integrability and to study the spectrum of this string theory. So this is a spectrum of closed strings. And we focus on a sector which is zero winding and zero momentum on the torus. So this means that there is no zero mode of the momentum. So of course we look at fluctuations on the torus, but the string states fluctuate around a fixed point on the torus. So we don't wind around the torus. So there are several backgrounds, as I said, said of this type. There are several fluxes you can turn on. So maybe the simplest one is the Roman Roman background, which takes the form of the D1, D5 system. So you have a bunch of D5 brains and D5 of those. And embedded in those are D1 brains and D1. And then there's also a last parameter, which is the string coupling. And it has some uh, geometric parameters. This is radius of ADS and S, which are just related by the string coupling and the number of D5 brains. That's the volume of the T4, which is also given by the number of brains. That's just the ratio. And it's supported by a Ramon Ramon three form flux, which is just proportional to the number of D5 brains and to the volume forms of ADS3 and S3. So this is very much like a six dimensional version of what you would have in ADS5 times S5. Plus, of course, a torus, which comes along for the right. So, in, but these are, so, so these are the parameters of, of the simplest uh, D1, D5 system or, or ADS3 times S3 background, the number of brains, which is some fixed integer and the string coupling. But as Kolya alluded to, there are many other parameters you can turn on. So in fact, there are 20 moduli and 
all of these moduli you can turn on and still preserve the full 16 supersymmetries of the system. So what are these moduli? They are string coupling. You can turn on a constant self-dual B field on the torus. You can turn on the Roman Roman scalar or either self-dual or anti-self-dual Roman Roman two form. And finally, you can change the metric of the torus as long as you preserve the, preserve the trace of the metric because the volume of the torus is fixed in terms of these three integers. So that can't change. But the rest of the metric you could freely deform and still preserve all supersymmetries. So however, these latter 16 moduli, so one scalar, six components of a two form and nine components of a traceless four dimensional metric, do not affect this spectrum of closed string with zero winding and zero momentum because they would only affect, say, changing the volume of some certain one cycle on the torus would change boundary condition on, on the states winding at that direction. But if you look at states of zero winding, it doesn't do that. Yeah. However, these two, so the G string obviously affects the spectrum because it just sits here right in the radius. And the self-dual B field also affects this. And actually you can think about turning on the self-dual B field. It's the same as doing a TRT transformation on T4. Meaning you do a T duality along some cycle on T4. So and like T4 is completely decoupled uh, in a sense, it's like just a free theory there, or if you turn on, I don't know, coupling. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, sorry, what do you mean? It's not completely free because fermion, I mean, yeah, so when, uh, your argument that uh, they do not affect the spectrum. No, I would say it doesn't affect, so it doesn't affect, as I mentioned in the beginning, I, I talk about the spectrum of string states in the zero winding and zero momentum sector. So it only affects states that have some winding number on T4. So if you only look at states with zero winding number or some total momentum along T4, because it would, Changing the volume along the some one cycle changes the quotization condition on the momentum in that direction, but that's all it does. And if I only put zero momentum. But when you say that, uh, like you, you don't really know the spectrum yet, right? Uh, and uh, what you say it sounds like a free uh, argument uh, of some free string. Right, so if, the, if you turn on like some weird interaction between all this ADS3, S3 and T4, who knows, maybe they will start uh, filling this parameter too. No, but I mean, okay, but you, you can look around, down the string action. You see the Ramon, Ramon. So these are Ramon, Ramon potentials. They don't couple to anything in the green short string directly, if you have no B field. Sorry, or, or H flux. Will these parameters affect uh, affect the uh, the higher correlators? What physics does That's depend? A good question. On? I mean, clearly the full string theory spectrum depends on it because there are many states that don't have zero winding and zero momentum. It's just the simplest part of the spectrum. But and the part that zero the zero winding zero momentum, but you do OPE. Will OPE depend on these quantities? Well, if in OP you have uh, high winding states, no, if you have, have you. ah, you mean yeah, presumably, you... yeah. Uh, if you in, the, in an internal line need to sum over all states, then yes, I suppose so. It's a kind of topological characteristics. Uh... Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just this question of boundary conditions, if you want. It mm -hmm. changes some boundary conditions, but here the boundary conditions are such that you don't care what they are, mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. least for the metric for the Roman Roman. Potential that doesn't enter the action at all. So those you can probably turn on even for the higher point function. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, yes. I'm, I'm still a bit confused about the, the zero momentum normally is a consequence of the rasor. I, uh, I do mean something else. It's like the one which is uh, dual to Sorry? simplicity. Sorry, you broke up. Can you repeat that? So the zero momentum, something I would think about is a, as a dual to cyclicity in the dual theory, right? No, so this is, this is zero momentum. So in the target space, 
on T4. Not on the world sheet, yeah. no, it's not on the world sheet. No. Zero momentum. So the physical string, they take a simple. You mean so a translation point, a point like T4 string. direction? Yes. So, so it has a T4, okay. there are four flat okay, directions okay. along which it could have some momentum. And you just look at the zero momentum and also the winding. So it does not have anything to do with the worksheet momentum. I think all Olaf was trying just to do is tell you some facts about the Green Schwartz action without yeah. showing you the, the explicit Green Schwartz action. Yeah. So, so you can sorry, yeah. Yeah, so basically these things just come out if you just write down carefully the Green Schwartz action. Only some of these guys appear there and others don't. Yeah, so you would see that the only thing that basically could so the metric could appear is as a boundary condition. And if you look at uh, the sector, you don't have you don't have those states that would be affected by those boundary conditions. Okay, so let me continue. So the, the second system you could think about is the F1 NS5 system, which is similar. You have just fundamental strings and NS5 brains. Again, you have three parameters: the number of F1 strings, the number of and it's five brains, which are called K for historical reasons. And again, the string coupling. Again, the radius of ADS and S and the volume of T4 are just given by these parameters. Uh, you have, a, in this case, a NSMS H, uh, a three form NSMS flux, uh, which is the H field, which is of the same form essentially as before. And again, you have 20 moduli. They are the same except uh, which three form is. So there is this, now you only have the self dual, uh, self dual domino one form on any D field on T4. And like before, uh, 16 of these moduli don't affect the spectrum in the sector I'm looking at. For example, now the G string is in some sense irrelevant because it only affects the volume of T4, it doesn't affect the string, uh, the radius of ADS which will enter my spectrum, but the volume of T4 will not. And then you have four uh, remaining moduli, which actually affect this part of the spectrum. You have the ramon ramon scalar and the self-dual ramon ramon 2 form. And these two are actually, if you just do two T dualities on, on the torus, you go from C2 plus to C0. So there's really just one, or in simple just think about one parameter. So I think about turning on the Roman Roman scalar C0. Now, if you just plug this into the supergravity equations, you see that this actually induces some Roman Roman flux because there is a supergravity equation which essentially gives this F3 is minus C0H. So you have this non-zero H flux, you have a, some constant C0, and this equation right away tells you, well, you actually have some Roman Roman 3 form. So you can think about studying these backgrounds with mixed flux. So it's, a, it's a background containing both NS and NS3 uh, form and Roman Roman 3 form as studying a pure NS and S background and turning on some continuous modulus. So this okay. gives two interesting parameters. This K, which is an integer. So K is a number of brains. And actually I will often refer to, to, to have a K bar, which is just K divided by two pi because this factor two pi is everywhere. And then the second parameter is H, which is here, just G string times C0 times this K bar, which is a continuous parameter and which plays a role very similar, similar to the square root of lambda. In, in ADS. Can I ask a question? Yes. So in principle, I could just have started with a system with uh, all types of brains, right? Yeah, sure, sure. This is just one way of introducing so, it. This thing that you are doing now sort of mimics this system. I mean, it's, it's not ex it mimics the background that you get from this system, but uh, you get it from uh, changing yeah. the moduli. So, so, so it's quite this, this is really a continuous parameter in other words, whereas the number of brains isn't. Sure, sure. This is a continuous parameter. Yeah, it shows that this is really a continuous parameter. Well, it always was a continuous parameter actually because it always comes with the fact of G string, even in so in the D one D five system, R here is essentially. The coupling and mm -hmm. it's G string comes to no, times number of brains. It's always a continuous parameter, even though it's an integer 
times something. So do, do I understand correctly that basically the Ramon, the, the Ramon Ramon only background, the one without any NS flux, is really disconnected from everything else from this picture? I mean, if yes, I start. Exactly. Yes, you, you can't go in the moduli space, or in this continuous part of the moduli space from one to another, by just turning on these moduli, from what I can see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but what Alessandro said is also true. You could also just write down, you can just solve super gravity by a mixture of NS and S flux and one one flux. And this was how people first found these backgrounds. I find this coupling neater where you start with something well studied and it, it doesn't seem as, as uh, ad hoc to start. So could you summarize, so there are two modular spaces disconnected, each of them has 20 parameters, is it correct? Yes. So there are twenty. So they are not completely disconnected because they are related by S-duality. So S-duality takes D1, D5 into F1 and S5. But there's no, con you can't go in the moduli space continuously from one to another. So S-duality means that there is some point in this moduli space where this sphere becomes very strongly coupled and so on, and where I should rather describe it like this. There's a duality between the two. But it's not, I mean, it's two dual descriptions. It's not two a continuously connected system. You're not going from one to another. Well, you just, in strong coupling regime of one, you find weakly coupled regime of another. Yeah. Is that yes, what you're saying? Yeah. But then why it's not? But that, you can't see that in this. I mean, it's not trivial to see that in this description, but that is how it's supposed to work. Like if you solve non-perturbatively one of, of them, you will be happy. You don't need to resolve, uh, solve a, again another one. Presumably, yes. If you know, but you, you need to know it for all the moduli, or at least the relevant moduli to go from one to the other. I mean, presumably you need to like a, a, to be exact in G-string as well, right? To do yes. s Yeah, exactly. Ah, so you need to do non-planner. So. Yeah. Okay. At least that's, yeah. Well, the planar limits that are really two systems which have yes. nothing to do with each other. Yes. In fact, there are all sorts of families of systems, given yes. that you have a certain number of F1s, D1s, NS5s, D5s, right? You specify an integer for each one of those. Okay. And each one has 20 modules. But in practice, in, in the limit in which you're working, the only Thing, the only discrete label that you cannot really deform is K, right? So you have like yeah. K, if, K labels a family of T, an infinite family of things, and th then you have the other parameters. Yeah. But actually, yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, but anyway, so this was just a brief introduction to why I want to <laughs> study this. So one reason to see that this mixed flux here is interesting. And so, all the families are integrable classically, is it? All they, yes. So this, the only thing that is a bit non-trivial is the pure NS and S background without any modules to turn on. That limit is still a bit trickier. Is that not, yeah, you, you need to be a bit careful in the limit. But all of the other things are classically integrable. It's still classically integrable because it's just a tree that's really open. But <laughs> in the framework of our integrability, it's, a bit trickier. Sorry, I'm a little bit confused. Uh, you say we have a corner limit to disconnect the series, but then it says about mixed flux. So I can slowly turn on RR and uh, switch off an S. So, uh, yeah, but so th that's not a continuous limit because K here is, a dis is an integer. You can't turn that continuously off. So, so there's, they are labeled by one integer and then a continuous parameter. And, in some sense, yes, this would be the K is zero. So I guess it's just a question of perspective. The other one would be like, so if you could set K to zero here, but of course, then you can't, they're not continuously connected to each other, just because there's a discrete parameter. And if we get that far, I will tell you that's actually important that it's discrete. So to limit a K, K zero then? Yeah, if you want. Yes, K. H is zero or K is zero. This may be easier way to see it. That, that's the pure, pure NSNS and pure Ramon Ramon. So, so I've introduced a, 
ADS by continue. And, and nowadays it's, you might want to do, know what the dual CFT is. And actually we got some answers to this quite recently. So if I take the NSMS background and put the integer K is one and go to the origin of the module, I suppose. So I only have maybe G string turned on. Then the dual is a symmetric orbifold on T4 with 4,4 supersymmetry. And this is a theory people are talking about in, in the context of ADS string CFT tunes already since the, since the beginning of, of the subject. Uh, but what about what? other parameters? If, this, if K is one, you still have uh, many parameters. Where... So you still have 20 parameters and, and only. But in the symmetric. Zero, uh, so so you, you go to a particular point in this 20 dimensional modular space to find this. So it's not only K equals one, all other parameters. Yeah, K equals to one is an integer, and in addition to that, there are 20 continuous parameters. And I suppose I mean, you go to a particular point in this. So the statement about uh, this exact duality uh, with uh, symmetric or default is valid yes. when you fix all parameters, not only K. You fix K and you fix, at least you set the Ramon Ramon modular here to zero. Uh, and I suppose G string you send to zero. I but think you could the, you could probably add the B field. All the parameters, right? And symmetric or before there is like no parameters there. Right? Are there any? There are no parameters. Well, there are parameters. I think there is a parameter which is exactly the metric of the T four, which is probably again completely irrelevant there. But I suppose you could do one. But I mean, what you can, symmet sorry, symmetric n has got twenty moduli. It has moduli still. Is but that what you mean by say, parameters? But they're not turned on in the background, right? It, it, it sits at a particular point. You can still identify this 20 dimensional moduli space, which means there are 20 mar exactly marginal operators in the theory, which in theory could deform your Lagrangian field. And these are exactly these 20 moduli I have here. But they are all turned off when I say symmetric n. And when I, when I have a solvable CFT, either at symmetric n t4 or uh, adding this extra Liouville factor, which was the recent proposal by Eberhardt and Gabardil, which is the case larger than one case. This is all at the singular point in the modular space. Now, you could, in theory, turn on some one or one vertex operator in the background to turn on C0 or C2 to get something due to this mixed flux theory I was talking about. But that's, of course, very hard to do in the CFT or, say, in, in, in the in a RNS description of the string, for example. Okay, so let me now go on and talk a bit more. Uh, were there more questions? No. Uh, a bit about this string theory in some more detail. So the uh, ADS3 is 3T4. It has an isometry algebra, which is given by TNC1, 1 slash 2 square. You can easily understand the bosonic part is just an SO2, 2 for the ADS3, and SO4 for the ADS3, and that is just flat, four flat directions. However, if I take the zero one and zero momentum uh, sector, I can essentially, sorry, I can think about T4 as R4, essentially. So I can do locally, I can think about rotations along the T4 directions, even though that's not a real isometry. So what is uh, TC1 comma one slash two? It's just two dimensional conformal symmetry or a chiral part of it and a two-dimensional R symmetry. I have a question. You have two PSU there. Is P should be on both of them or it should be, can we just share one P between two? It should be on both of them in here. Separately, so. Separately. They have two, two, two separate, so each of them have, yeah. <coughs> separately for both. So for one copy, it has uh, a two-dimensional super algebra and an R symmetry algebra, which is SU2. You can give the cartel elements like the dimension and the R symmetry of J. It has eight super charges and it has a half PPS shortening condition, which is delta equal to J, so G equal to J. Now, if you want to do string theory, you want to fix a 
fix a gauge. And this breaks PSU 1 comma 1 slash 2 square into an algebra we call PSU 1 slash 1 to the 4 centrally extended. And this is completely analogous to how you in ADS 5 times S5 start with the PSU 224 algebra. You fix light con gauge and you break it to PSU 2 slash 2 square. So this is this algebra is also exactly like in the PSU 2 slash 2 square case. This is just a two copies of a smaller algebra to PSU 1 slash 1 square. And the two copies here, here it's very hard, tricky to write it down the piece and the SS. These two copies share central, central charges. Let me show what I mean. So this algebra, the algebra is one slash one square. It's just a very simple algebra. You have four super charges, which term wise. So we'll just take to disks for R2. And the centers of those disks are going to fall in a way which is. There are two, uh, for, for super charges, pairwise commuting to two central charges and they anti commute with each other. But like you do again in, in the case of PC2 slash 2 and then equal to 4, you can go off shell by introducing an extra central extension. Now instead of two central charges here, you add these extra four, extra two central charges, just two complex numbers, which in some sense couple the two, these two charges to each other. Now here I've written them as a left and a right copy, so the left and the right Hamiltonian. But uh, it's, more, it's easier to think about linear combinations of them. So, so the central charges in your original theory are just the energy of your state and the mass of the state, H and M. Or in ADS three terms, I guess the second one would be, the, the M is a combination of, of angular momentum. On ADS three and ADS two. In addition, exactly like in PSU 2 slash 2, you have a non-trivial co-product, which I will not be able to have time to discuss here. Now, how does the representation of this algebra look like? Well, there are long and short representation in this case, because I only have four supercharges. And if I think about the highest weight representation, the long and short are very literal. So long representation has four states, two fermions and two bosons. And the short representation is two, always one boson, one fermion. And the short one uh, satisfy a quadratic shortening condition like this. If you write, want, you can write this a square is m squared plus cc bar. And you can parameterize a short representation which satisfies these conditions <coughs> in terms of a momentum and a mass, which from the representation, like from just the perspective of this algebra is just any number, it's a D1 charge. However, uh, like someone was uh, referring to before, physical strings, so if I, if I don't just care about uh, representation theory of this algebra, but I want some relation to string theory, I need my states, some actual physical state of the extra condition coming from just periodic boundary conditions, that the total momentum on the world sheet. So on the world sheet now, not on, on, on the target space momentum I was talking about before, should be zero, or at least some multiple of two pi. And this translates to the fact that this central shot should vanish. And this is a, an, the condition that my central extended algebra is actually not central extended on a physical state. There's also a second condition, which is that the mass here, which here is just some U1 charge, which could be anything, the total uh, U1 charge of a physical state has to be an integer. And that's just because the U1 is actually in embedded in some relation of some compact U1s, or some combination of compact U1s in PSU1, comma one slash two. So what this means is that, so one way of solving this is that this charge M, obviously if all of the M's are integers, which are called small M here, this is solved. But because I also have the second relation that the sum of all integers is two pi times an integer, I could also have something that for each excitation is proportional to the 
momentum of the excitation, as long as the coefficient of proportionality here is some fixed integer divided by two pi. And this is exactly so what you get. When you write sum, you're summing over what? Uh, you know, this is a bit sloppy. So this, what I mean here is, this is my parameterization for individual excitations on the wire chain. But then I want a physical state. So I take, I describe, say, in some sort of beta wave function or something. So you have a bunch of excitation, which makes up a physical string state. And this is just the sum over all excitation and the eigenvalue. This is now the eigenvalue for each excitation. But like then uh, from the fact that sum is an uh, integer uh, multiple to pi, why does it follow that uh, c is zero? Uh, this is very sloppy. <laughs> Because, I mean, if this p, if this p here oops, is 2 pi, then it follows, right? Then it's e to the i 2 pi. Yeah, but x minus 1 doesn't commute with sum. Right? Well, that's, that's, that's the magic I, I was referring to when I say there's a non trivial co product. That summing c is actually the same as summing the exponent. It's actually like in GSE 2 such thing. So in this case, this is true, even though it, it doesn't look. Like. So anyway, so what I, my conclusion is that the mass I can allow to be of the form an integer, which is some eigenvalue or fixed free representation times some integer, which is fixed for all my states. So we can't vary from excitation to excitation. So divided by two pi times the momentum. And this is exa exactly what you find in the mixed flux case. So here, this k slash is now so the k, which is so two pi k slash k bar, is now the k I had in the mixed flux in the MSMS background. So the number of MS five bits. Finally, I want to remark that these representations are actually chiral. So if I go to zero momentum, then this c is zero. E to the i e minus one goes to zero, and then I just have the Schottky condition, which is h squared is equal to m squared, which means there are two possible solutions, E is M or E is minus M. And this leads to there being two types of representation, left and right moving representation. Where this left and right moving refers to chirality in the dual CFT, actually. And finally, just by plugging the C into this dispersion relation, you find, sorry, to this shortening condition, you find a dispersion relation for your world sheet excitation, which is just this eigenvalue m square plus four h square sine square t of t, where this h is now uh, the other coupling I was talking about. So this is again something very familiar uh, from ADS5, except that this m now have this extra linear piece there, it's m plus k slash p. And you get Uh, yeah, so if you look at, just look at the string spectrum from the world sheet, it consists of four of these sort of short representations. And the fundamental excitations have either this small integer m from here, equal to plus one or equal to minus one, and the corresponding representations of type left and right. So these are four massive excitations, sorry, two representations, two copies, yeah, two massive. And then there are also two representations which are massless, they are n equal to zero. And you can work out the S matrix between scattering of these representations from just this DC1 to the four symmetry up to some scalar factors, exactly like the dressing phase in N equal in ADS5. Uh, except now you have several different types of representations that you. Uh, scatters, a priori, you get one such undetermined factor for each pair of representations. Could I ask uh, some uh, niche question? So the sages you get in different uh, copies, uh, do they need to be the same? Sorry, the age. The age. Yes, it needs to be the same. It has to do exactly again with this, I think. Otherwise, this can't be true. That these two, the age here, which is just uh, introduced as the coefficient in the central charge. Well, I can show you the details later, but it, yes, it needs to be the same. It's not. But I mean, for two for two different uh, copies of the square of SU to one slash one. I mean, 
if, if I have my private copy and you have your private copy and they never talk with each other, we can choose it however we want. But if you want to have one state, I mean, you can't have two states in your string theory with different ages at the same time. Because right. age can't depend on, it, it is a parameter of the theory, not of the representation. But uh, maybe, I don't know if I understood correctly what Kalia was saying. Do you mean like you have uh, two copies of SU1 slash one in the sense of left and right, or in the sense of uh, then you take the tensor product like yeah, two copies of SU2 slash two? Well, my understanding was you have four copies, right, of SU. That's right. So then you group them in, the, in, in squares. And for mm -hmm. each of them, you have this uh, story of extension. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. There are two parameters, sage, which you can deduce from group theory considerations. Oh. So why? Oh, that's really... No, not really. I mean, I mean when you take the tensor share... product, not really. And in the standard don't... setting, they share central charges. So, so while it's two copies, it's not really two copies because the central charges. Sorry, all of exa exactly two copies share the two central charges. You have uh, uh, four of the uh, one slash one, and uh, two of them share one, right? Uh, in pairs. Or well, there is no. Yeah. Yes. I mean, you have two copies of this algebra or this. Sure. Oh, sorry, I'm going the wrong way. This algebra. Yes. But, but you only have one copy of H, of each H. That's the same eigenvalue. Now, again, this is just SU1 slash 1 square, but you have in total symmetries to the fours. Yeah, so this is square. And yeah. in total, you have two copies of this algebra. Yeah, so why do they have to have the but same? Because this is the I mean, there, it's not completely true, but it is two copies. It's two copies of the supercharges. But they actually, there's just one H left. It's the same H left in both. All right. Exactly, exactly like the two PSU two slash two square share the same Hamiltonian in A that's right. Right. Like there's just one anomalous dimension if you take in any to four, even if you have two copies of PSU two slash two. Sorry, Olaf, can you recap one more time? How do you describe the physical states on the wall sheet? By what? Sorry, what do you mean? Uh, uh, how, you said you described your physical states on the world sheet by certain combination of the... I just think about this physical state as, I mean, I have some, I have a two-dimensional field theory and the state there I just think about as a bunch of excitations. Each carrying, each representation, each excitation has to but be... Is, okay, excitations are restricted by what? What are we restricted by? Uh, what, what are these excitations? Any excitations or...? Uh, some sort, so my I mean, from my perspective, I just start with the green Schwartz string and I expand around some simple background. But uh, depending on your setting, these, these could be something like some solitons as well. Okay. But take, the simplest example is take just green Schwartz string Fixed light because uh, I see. And then uh, all yeah. your fundamental excitations will be excitations transforming this representation. So because my, my, I think my question. We, have a, we need a break in eight minutes, or, uh, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, because I think my second point was related maybe to what Kole was saying. Uh, what, what's, what, what, what is this specific, specific form of your co product that you are. Uh, oh, uh, that you, I did. That, I shouldn't have mentioned that because I don't want to be in the detail. This is a very old story. Yeah. I don't want to go into the full. I can tell you later, but that would take another hour. But probably it should be involved. It's in very similar to the ISU2G. Okay, yeah, okay, okay. Factors okay. Of each okay. It's factors of E to the IP over G. Okay, okay, yeah, factors exactly. All right. You can essentially yeah. copy the ADS five story. Why in the first one of those phases? Okay. Yeah. Uh, just to be clear, these massless modes are not uh, related to torus, is them, right? But they are, in the they, massless bosons are just, you can think about just the free bosons on, on the... Uh, no, but you there. studied only representation C related to just 3 cross S3 so far. No, no, sorry. It also, this was just a quick review of things that <laughs> we have been talking about for a long time. So I, I didn't go through all the details, but this is also about, I mean, this is just a symmetry algebra of the system. Any excitation has to be, Rips following some into some representation of, of the system. I mean, even excitations on the torus are excitations in the string, same string theory, which still carries the PSU one comma one slash two symmetry. And they form they fall in this 
massless representation. Okay. So as I said, we have we can fix all the S metrics up to dressing factors. Naively, there would be we have four representations, so we can form sixteen pairs, well, I guess ten symmetric pairs, and so naively you would have something like ten uh, unknown faces. But through some discrete symmetries, such as unitarity, for example, which actually relates a right-left scattering to left-right scattering. Uh, in the end, you essentially end up with four independent faces, four independent functions you need to solve. And these are then related by various points of crossing equations. And I will focus now on the ma massive faces, so the faces for the massive excitations. But before we do that, I want to talk a bit about the kinematic system, in other words, about the dispersion relation. Sorry, when you speak about all those asymptotic characteristics like this matrix and dispersion relation, uh, aren't you a bit uh, brave in the presence of the massless modes? Uh, will it still make sense? Because asymptotic bit and that uh, is not exact anymore in any regime. Oh, but I mean, the dispersion relation is exact. Uh, the, the representation theory I talk about here is so exact. What might not be exact, I mean, and well, it's exact for the string which is much bigger than one over m and m is zero. Well, no, the, the only condition on the string is that it has some large j, some large r chart, for example, something is big. m is just some well sheet excitation, that doesn't have to be big. I mean, it's sort of a bit like the story that we heard uh, Ines talk about, right? In the end, you still need the S matrix. Even if you, you know, you, you're going to construct a TBA, but you, you, you still use the S matrix anyway. Well, but there I think uh, there was important assumption that there exists uh, an integrable deformation which has uh, zero mass. Right. Yeah, so you, I mean, here you have... The story outside M equals zero and then take the limit. Uh, and then we saw the bit and that actually got corrected in the, in the asymptotic regime. I mean, uh, I think the, the bit and that's, uh, I mean, the point is you still need to insert everywhere she would insert the S matrix. So it's the same kind of idea here. You know, you yes, have an S matrix. The construction of the S matrix is special relation is just a, I mean, if you want to think about it, as, you can just think about it from the perspective of algebra and representation theory. Uh, that it certainly makes sense, and this M is just a free parameter, which I... Oh, I, I agree, as matrix. Integer. Uh, probably you can define as matrix as a scattering amplitude and so on, yeah. but the question is whether uh, this object uh, is sufficient in the presence of massless modes uh, in order to mm, compute spectrum in any region. Oh, th that's a different question, yes. Well, so, I mean, we know in the end you'll be used as a building block, right? And the TBA for the massless modes already exists, so... Hopefully, there'll be a TBA for the whole thing once, and it'll use as input these as matrices. I mean, before we even get there, I think a good starting point is at least to understand this S matrix, which is what I want to do here. And before I understand S matrix, I actually need to understand my excitations, in other words, the dispersion relations. And so, Maybe it's a bit small, but here is the dispersion relation. I think it's almost the same as in ADS5, except it has this extra linear term, Kp. So it's mass plus Kp or m plus Kp. So for k0, this is familiar, it's just almost a sign. And it's a periodic function in P. Now, if I turn on k here, it's clearly not periodic. I mean, for large, if, if we were to take large P, it just becomes linear. So still, it seems like if you do, if, when you obtain this from world sheet theory, your, your P has some finite support. They, they go between zero and two pi. It's not a continuous parameter. So how can we understand that? Because now could you choose a physical region here? Sorry, when you say that uh, they go from zero and two pi, it's because you have in mind that really constructing some states as like plane waves and- Yes. Uh, well, you, you also did this expression. You know, just how, how the, what the momentum is on the word. Yeah. I mean, if the worship, uh, so why is between zero and two pi? I mean, uh, that's of course arbitrary. 
I mean, obviously here, zero to two pi is arbitrary. And I'm actually not sure what it should be here. So I just drew zero to two pi because it's- No, no, sure, but- uh, plot. I'm saying, I can see if you want to construct like scattering states with like E to the IPs and so on, you construct states in this way, I can see why you want to say that there is a fundamental region, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, why else, apart from this fact, you would say that there should be a fundamental region? But isn't that built in in the whole algebra construction that, uh, let's see. I'm not sure, I mean. And anyway, even if, if, whether you want it to be there or not, my point I was going to make is, I, I don't think you need to worry about it because you don't only have like fundamental excitations, you have bound state as well. So what are bound state? They are just the same sort of representation, but where this integer is not just one, but two or three or four or anything. Apart from that, the dispersion relation is exactly the same. So if you just plot these for k is zero, it's just a number of this, the first five bound states. They're just sitting on top of each other. However, if I start to turn on k, for k is one, we see that the, the lowest fundamental excitation is momentum starts somewhere at momentum zero, and then it goes to two pi. But at two pi, the momentum of the fundamental excitation is exactly so the end of the fundamental excitation with momentum two pi is the same as the momentum of the first bound state with momentum zero. And then I go up with the first bound state and when I go to two pi, I actually have this energy of the moment of the second bound state and so on. So this was for k is one, for k is two, every time I go two pi, I actually effectively jump my bound state number by two or three or four. So, it seems like the full word state spectrum is periodic, but you need to realize that if I take some particular bound state number, say the fundamental, and I shift my momentum by two pi, it's the same as taking my momentum back to with two pi, so it's still in this, say this fundamental region, but I've shifted my bound state number by k. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, Time-wise, I think it's a good uh, point uh, to have a break soon. Yes. Uh, so if you want to still say something before the break. Yeah, yeah, no, we can do it now if you want. That's actually a good spot. Okay, sure. So that... Uh, let's see if I can. So somebody asked what... Uh, how, how to parameterize this in the better equations, for example. So you just, oops. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. So let me first just remind you of some common parameterizations of this kinematics for just k is zero. So this is exactly what you would have in n equal to four. So often we use the x plus minus parameters, just defined by e to the ip is x plus over x minus, and then you have this additional shortening condition just x plus plus one or x plus minus x minus minus one or x minus is a constant to i m over h. Or we introduce the u parameters, just x plus one over x. If you compare here, we see that then u of x plus minus u of x minus is also the same constant. And you can put reality constraints on it. So if the momentum is real, then x plus and x minus will be complex conjugate and u of x plus x minus is real plus a constant imaginary part. So how would you do, would this be deformed once we turn on this parameter k? So the, the x plus minus now satisfy the same defining relation e to the ip is x plus or x minus, but the, this shortening condition has an extra log of x plus over x minus on the right hand side. Now, the x plus minus defined in this way are the ones you can plug into the vertex, no, sorry, S matrix. So the coefficients of the S matrix and, and find the S matrix that commutes with the central extended symmetry algebra. Similarly, you can define a U of X, but again, including not only X plus one over X, but an extra U, but extra minus log of X. 
And this is just such that this relation still holds. And the same reality, with this choice, the same reality conditions are still there. But you can also just keep P, uh, right? And uh, be happy. So the, the question is uh, the following. Normally U is a, uh, canonically conjugate uh, to the quasi momenta in the classical integrability. That's why the sex of U is useful, right? So here yes. you, any parameterization is fine uh, if you don't have this principle of... Uh, I mean, at least this X sort of, if I express the S matrix in terms of this X, then it takes exactly the same form for any k, including k is zero. Yeah, but it's important to check that u is actually canonically conjugate. That's a good question. The momentum, at least classically. Well, I believe plus still means shift by i over two. It's Yes. And of sign of being canonical. So I am over age, rather. Oh, yeah, I mean, the area is called M. This is the convention thing. Oh, that would be true in, in uh, it is fine as well, right? It's just including higher bound states. How many So this is for one of the two. So there are two representations. The other one, we just have a minus sign. It's the opposite sign in front of all the red quantities here. So, so it, that's, sorry, so it seems like uh, you're correcting definition of X uh, at already one loop level, right? Because if H, yes. so you uh, should be able to see it there, whether it's still conjugate. So there should be some effect uh, which you can see in the classical integrability if you one loop correct it. So because u again has a physical meaning, whereas x is a more or less up to you what it is, but u is a fixed quantity. It is the one which is canonically conjugate to the uh, classical quadrant. Okay, so that's a good point. I haven't, I don't think I checked that. But let's assume that we take this function u of x, including the log. So what is this function? So the normal u of x, u, which is just x plus one over x, it covers, so the, the x plane covers the u plane twice, right? It has a single cut, which you often take to be a shortcut in the x plane, oh, sorry, in the u plane. And on one sheet, you could put the outside of the unit circle. And then you go through the unit circle, the inside is also covered by one sheet of the U-plane. Now, for what I'm going to do is, is, is better to work with long cuts, but it's exactly the same story. Now, instead I take the upper half plane in the X-plane and that covers once the U-plane and the lower half covers once the U-plane. And now going through, so from inside the outside circle up here is just quote, not going through a cut in the U-plane, but going from this part outside, this part outside is going through a cut in the U-plane and going in here and coming out here. So what happens once we turn on K? So the unit circle is just shifted and the scale, so as you see, it goes to the right and it actually becomes a bit larger. But if you look at the map of, of this X under, sorry, the image of the U-plane under this, you see that it's still true that the upper half plane X covers exactly the U plane once. And the lower half, no, no, lower part of the X plane covers U plane once. But if I instead try to do the say outside this circle, it covers the U plane more than once. And this is because exactly this log branch cut here. So there's a jump that go from here to here in the X plane. Is cut, I would, I would have a jump in U. Rather, if I go around it, I should have a jump. It's going something, some weird way here, from here to here. So if you compare it to this um, story of uh, Vichedo, for example, 
right? The, uh, when they did this Q deformed, essentially, they also had some some deformation to the usual map x plus one over. Okay, x. I don't remember what that looks like. So could it be actually related? Just I don't know, okay. you know, like magnetic flux, Q deformation. Maybe it's like yeah. totally wrong association, but still. <laughs> so what's the dispersion relation then? Well, they actually have, I think, a periodic structure of the sex cuts. Um, so in the U plane, I think you get uh, cuts separated by one over Q. Yeah. The dispersion relation? It became periodic. I, I don't yeah. remember, but. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, that's true. They have a, I remember the picture. Of the I thought that also whether it's periodic or not depended on whether you do Q root of unity, in which case it's periodic, or Q real, in which case I don't think it is. Uh, but I think that at least in terms of the parameterization of X plus X minus that they use is a little different, though I don't honestly remember it from the top of my head. Yeah, but the question is which one is the correct one? Uh, so, I mean, uh, we don't really For know what? whether this one is the right one, right? Well, because we know that this dispersion is the right one. No, dispersion is the right one, but uh, uh, the X of U is a bit arbitrary. I, I don't think that the Q, so in particular, this dispersion, I think, breaks parity. And I don't think that the, the Q deformation breaks parity on the worship. So I think that they're just different. But I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, just like check it out. Yeah. <laughs> we, ch we checked some of the other ones. I don't know the Vichetta paper, that's why I'm not really commenting, but some of these other deformations are not that uh, similar. I think uh, maybe Alessandro T can remind me, but I think well, uh, there, were, there, were, there were other ones that, um, uh, Miramontes and people looked at and I mm -hmm. think there are some similarities but only in certain limits and not so clear uh, that it's really this the same in general so I yeah I don't think it is the same is what I'm trying to say just a curious historical remark so if you come back to like uh, through Joukowsky like 100 years ago uh, so there is a question about vector field around the uh, uh, unit disk in two dimensions. So this is gradient field, and so grad I mean potential for this gradient vector field phi. Uh, it's well, it's, it's holomorphic plus uh, anti-holomorphic piece, and so u is this phi actually. Yeah. Where k, k, k is a, like a, a vert vorticity of the field. Yeah, except so I think. K has to be imaginary. Uh, no, of course there is I there, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so there is but apart from that, it's the same yes. as the, yes. the actual Zhukovsky. So it's like Zhukovsky's solution for uh, yeah. like a scalar potential for vector flow around uh, disk. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it's already quite late. See, so that will be a bit brief for now. So what I really want to talk about is Crossing. So crossing transformation sends particles to antiparticles. Like in ADS5, this is given by sending x plus minus to one over x plus minus. And if you look at these shortening conditions, you can see that this changes this sign. So of course, the left-hand side, if I send x, the x is to one over x, remains the same. This is just a constant, but this term changes the sign, which means that the left representation goes to the right representation. And in particular, it, it acts non-trivial on this u I have here, because again, oh, that's too long, too far back, but it will effectively change the sign here. So it doesn't map to the same values. So if I had k is zero, I had a, in the u plane a crossing transformation with something like this. I, I, I have two cuts corresponding to x minus and x plus. I, I go around, go through one cut on the first sheet, come to the second cut on the second sheet, and then on the third sheet, I go to back to exactly where I started. Or in terms of long cuts, it would look like I entered the long cut, and then I go around between the two cuts, and then I come out on the third sheet. 
but when I have this extra log, so with case two, for example, uh, firstly, I don't start and end on exactly the same spot. But secondly, once I go through a cut, the other cuts here on the left actually shift because of the log branch cut. So I go through this cut and now instead of seeing a, the second cut down here, I actually see it up here. And then I go between here and I go through this cut here. And instead of seeing this one up here, I go down here. So the structure on the first and final sheet are quite different. But we can write down the crossing equations. They are. I I, I didn't get that. Sorry. Sorry. So you said that, that they don't end up in the same point. No. Yes. In I, I U plane. In U plane, if you take this U and send U of one over x, you change the sign here. So ah, okay. U yeah, x is not different. equal to U because you send left to right. Yeah. So you're sending x to one over x, but that's not really sending U to U as, as it used to be. Mm -hmm. But it's also the you as before you 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 start on one sheet you go to the second sheet and you end up on the third sheet, but then the other cuts on that sheet actually look different. So in the first cut, so if you want to think this is a physical region, you have these set of cuts, but on the final sheet, you have these set of cuts. But you don't cross them. I mean, you cross only the cut on the right. I only crossed the one on the right, but the one on the left changed. Yeah, okay, but you, yeah, okay, you don't cross them. Yeah. But you, also, you, you, yeah. I don't need to cross them. Also, I always thought that in a sense, the important thing are the branch points and the cuts is a bit up to you to put them wherever you want or not. Uh, I suppose that's true, but I mean, the branch points. I mean, it's important whether it you go around. Here. Sorry? It's important to what you go, uh, what points you go around, but where exactly the cuts are shouldn't, uh, and that should, of course, should. I mean, well, it's also important to fix cuts and never change them uh, in the same slide. <laughs> so let's not. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, of course, it's not important where the cuts are, but the, the crosses here are the branch points, and they mm -hmm. they do change. To be. Mm -hmm. So this this sheet has two cuts over here, or two branch points over here, and this sheet, which I come into, have have them two up here, and the third one has them mm -hmm. like that. Just because of the log. But then, uh, so you said well, you do crossing from k equals two, and you return to k equals zero or something. No, no, you, constant um, crossing doesn't change k. This is just an example. Crossing is just this transformation. This k is just fixed. Just a coupling. So I send x to one or x, and then I ask, how, what does that look like in U plane? Normally in ADS5, it would look something like this. Probably familiar. You start here, you go around these cuts or in long cuts like this. Start here, go around here. And what I'm saying is once you turn on this coupling K, <coughs> the analytical structure of the branch cuts actually is quite different because they, once yeah, you, but when, you when cross you, one cut and the other cut. Both cuts, will you get the same structure or not? Otherwise you, you can get a meaningful equation. You I'm will not, I mean, you will locally here, but these cuts are not the same. The other cuts that you see around you, if you go far away from the point you are. So crossing transformation changes, uh, the complete crossing it changes your analytic structure. In these variables, which is just an indication that these are bad variables, but. Well, it means you can't write function equals to the same function crossing. No, yeah. So, so what it means is, yeah, I mean, in a sense, that's true. And these are the crossing equations. I can write them nicely in terms of x plus minus, <coughs> but even if I write something simpler, uh, like this, this is something like, so this is part of the crossing equation, which if I well, it was an ADS5, such a combination is just the combination of u minus, u1 minus u2. It's just x plus one over x minus y minus one over y with some shift. <clears throat> but in, if k is non-zero, this is not equal to u because I'm missing the log piece. So the right-hand side of crossing, so this even part of crossing, for example, is not a nice function of u.
even though it's itself crossing invariant. Okay, so I just uh, quickly went past, it's getting quite late. Uh, I quickly went past my final, uh, but, but my slides about what the crossing equations are. So first to say that we have a fixed equation. The equation looks exactly the same for any K because the right-hand side, so these are the massive faces, the right-hand side does not depend on K. And it actually relates to different functions. It's a sigma, I have a left on the left and the right on the left. <clears throat> so it's, it's two different functions. Sigma left left is related by crossing to sigma right left. But it's important to, to see that in, in these variables, the right hand side does not depend on the coupling k. In particular, you can set k to zero and have the same equation. And they are a bit easier if I split up the part that's invariant under double crossing and the part that's non invariant. So the odd, odd part. We just have this simple form, and if you remember your literature and you uh, multiply these two, you get just the Hernandez Lopez equation. So, this is some sort of square root of Hernandez Lopez equation. But again, so I don't understand how you can write a meaningful equation between functions which has different ranges. Oh, sorry, but that was in the U plane. So, maybe this is just telling me that the U's variables were. Well, but whatever, let's uh, use U. What's the problem? I, I'm allowed to use U. Yeah, let's look at this equation in new variables. This is totally legal. You can just mm -hmm. uh, say, I don't like you, so let's not think about that. Uh, so, and then uh, your left hand side, the right hand side, they have different analytic properties. That's very true. Uh, you, you can't build non trivial equation out of that unless there are some, uh, some of these uh, discontinuities are really simple and K inside with just yeah, so continuity of the right hand side, which would be a bit too trivial. Because normal discontinuities are complicated of the dressing phase, right? So we mm -hmm. can easily cancel well, from axis. I mean, all of this, the reason they have this weird behavior is that you have this extra log cut. So when you go around the cuts on the oh, left yeah, side, yeah. side, except on the right hand side, you have a simple shift by something proportional to i pi. Right, at the same time, if you kind of assume that there are infinitely many cuts which are periodically separated as in Q yeah. again, or something similar to that, then okay, even if they move around, still you have the one discontinuity just to replace as another when you do double crossing, maybe something like that. Just yeah, something a series of cuts they move with respect to each other, and you still get non trivial equation. Yeah, so uh, cartoon he showed just showed x plus x minus cuts, not yes. all other cuts. Yeah, so these are not, so, thank you, Dima, that's also true. This is just the cuts of x, from x plus x minus. So once I go through the first, yeah, isn't that true in ADS5 as well? You go for, in the first sheet, you only have. Yeah, once you go through the first, these cuts, infinitely many. you have two cuts, but once you got down here, you have infinitely many cuts. Yes. But the crossing relation relates this and this. Yeah, right. that's true. In the same way. Yes, I'm not, I'm not sure. What's the confusion, Claudia? No, confusion was, I think, in this, this picture, right? So actually, these yeah. are not cuts of sigma, these are cuts of x. These plus. are cuts of x plus x minus. So, so instead, maybe I should just, maybe I need to finish this soon, but I can show you instead. So we have a crossing equation. I have a bit too much information about it here. So can we solve it? Well. The first two orders we solved already a long time ago. You can see here that the leading orders, if I, first two orders at start in a story of coupling expansion. The first order is just AFS times this extra dialogue terms. You see the phase is more complicated already the leading order, the strong coupling. So this K times the dialogue term. Uh, at another slope order, again, it's a bit similar to to the Roman Roman case. So this is quite similar to Hernandez Lopez actually. This is exactly, if I set this parameter S to one, it's just the same as in, in the Roman Roman ADS3 case, but here this S encodes the K dependence. And unfortunately I was hoping to present a full solution today, but I will not be able to do that just yet. 
so we need to we still have some uh, we are working on it but there are still some subtleties so instead let me end by just speculating a little bit in the in what what Collier said so remember back in in the SD DHM phase the BS phase let's just think about so just think about one cut you have a cut so the, like the chi function you go through that you end up with a second sheet and the second sheet you have an infinite number of cuts right? and then you can go through say the third sheet you end up with a third sheet again you have an infinite number of cuts but this you follow me so instead of writing this as shortcuts we can write them as long cuts so, so i glue the upper half plane of the first sheet with some strip of the second sheet with some strip of the third sheet and so on and i can have more and more sheets so in terms of long cuts my sheets are my cuts are infinite in one direction so i have in the physical region i, I have no cuts and then like but i see an infinite number of cuts going below and the distance between all of these cuts are just one over h uh, so this is for k is zero so what happens when we turn on k k then so as we've seen the because of the log cut in the u-plane the left hand side cuts uh, jump a bit so instead it would look something like this so you have a you would expect an infinite number of cuts, long cuts going here and long cuts going there, but they are shifted down. And for larger and larger k, they will go more and more shifted down. So that, does that explain it more? And now if I go, okay, then I had to think about how to draw a crossing in this picture, because now you need to cross this cut from here and that I haven't drawn. But the actual phase should have an infinite number of cuts, of course. Okay, but I think it's time for me to conclude this. So I've been talking a bit about uh, string theory on with mixed flux, mixed, sorry, with ADS3 string theory with mixed flux. Uh, Study the spectrum of closed strings with no momentum and no winding on T4. It has a dual COT, this is very symmetric orbifolds, but at the moment it only describes the origin of the modular space. And this mixed, I, I wanted to convey, convey to you that this mixed flux theory has an interesting and novel analytical structure compared to the uh, pure Ramon Ramon case. However, right, we still need to understand. So we do understand how the crossing transformations work. But the question is, can we find the full resting phase? And can we match the full spectrum of, of, of the singularities, for example, the DHM double poles? So it would be very interesting, as we discussed before, is to consider a pure MSNS limit where we have indication. So we can take a limit such that you have a non-trivial S matrix, a non-trivial crossing relation. And it would be interesting to see if in this limit there would be some sort of TBA or quantum spectral curve that actually described the full spectrum even beyond what the symmetric orbifold does, which misses or at least doesn't contain the short string spectrum. Does the comment like, I don't know, let's thank the speaker. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Let, let's thank the speaker. So we have time for questions and discussion. Yeah, just to point out. So, in principle, uh, why do you need to solve crossing equation? It's uh, unless you want to write TBA, uh, this is not really useful. But I do want to write TBA, of course. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> no, I should uh, go straight to quantum spectral curve. Then no one. But you still need some sort of information as an topic. Yeah, but all you need is the crossing equation itself, and you should see that it leads to some cancellation of the poles at the end, and uh, be happy. But maybe one comment, like with this dispersion relation, the quantum spectral curve is going to be completely different. Yes, oh, so no, 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 really dispersion relation, right? Yeah. But, but because now the, if with this dispersion relation, the cuts are not, uh, don't have a like, square root type monodromy. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a great thing, right? Because it can't be the same as ADS5 crosses 5. Right. This has to become a Vesumino Witten model at this very singular yeah. point. Mm -hmm.
Can, can, can I make a comment? Yes. Uh, so on, on the very last uh, uh, slide, so and, uh, I just wanted to remark that the integrability description for the short string, string spectrum, uh, if you mean it at an SNS point, that seems to be given by just some very simple TBA. At least it reproduces completely the, sort of the short string spectrum as computed from the Vesumirovite model, but uh, Bogdan is shaking his head. So he's telling me that there is some other model. <laughs> I, I agree that if you take. So My understanding is that they don't have a short string spectrum. What do you mean? What? No, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. That's not the, true, I believe. The, the Vesumirovite model, you can compute a short string spectrum, right? Okay. I'm oh, sorry, you can't from the symmetric core default. From the symmetric core, from, okay. the, from the proposed CFT dual, that's another story. But if you're talking about just the worksheet, then there is a Vesumino-Witten construction. It gives you the short string spectrum, and there is an integrability sorry, yeah. construction, and it gives you the same spectrum for the short well, strings. Don't, don't this k equal one people also use Vesumino-Witten uh, worksheet? k equal one is yeah. a bit, sim is, is a bit, yeah. uh, uh, special because basically the the Vesumirovitten construction breaks down and there are no short strings whatsoever. So K1 is, is its own beast. Sorry. Yeah, then there aren't any short strings. There aren't so any. Larger strings. than one, there's some are. It feels still to me that there should be there. <laughs> yes. For for K Missing. larger than one, there are in the Vesumirovitten construction, and uh, I don't know, imperturbative PP way, whatever you want, right? Uh, we can do it in many ways then. There aren't in the proposed uh, symmetric product tolerance for mm -hmm. the UVL. Yes. The proposed CFT dual. But they, they are there in the resume. But there's also a claim that that model completely matches the. No, I think the, the claim, the claim uh, depends a bit uh, on, uh, I mean, it, uh, it, it, it can be phrased uh, at various levels of uh, precision, but I think that. Uh, uh, if uh, one phrase, phrase it pre precisely, the claim is that they reproduce only the long, that this correspondence reproduces the long string spectrum only. Then there are some arguments that maybe the long string spectrum is the most important that's, uh, that can be made by, in some contexts by some colleagues. Uh, but I don't think that, uh, um, that, nobody, that anybody would say that there aren't any short strings or that, uh, you know, that they reproduce them. They are just not in the description. The argument that sometimes people make is that the long strings are like many more. They have like the continuous, so they, they are like bigger. It's a bigger part of the spectrum. Yep. Uh, I, don't, I don't particularly agree with this particular argument, but in any case, I think that the idea is that for the short string spectrum, there is a worship description, which is the uh -huh. uh, right. model. And there is an integrability description, which is a TBA. Well, yeah, but uh, it's you know, I mean, there the, that TBA does not have um, does not match with the uh, h equals zero uh, results here. So uh, I, I agree, that's a puzzle, but I don't yeah. see how. And it... uh, so it's not really. Uh, I mean, it's uh, it's some sort of miracle, and it would be nice to understand how that miracle. Yes, my happens. point is absolutely. So, so it's not that this blows up in the limit. There seems to be a nice limit. Everything yeah, is. so the, the so S you matrix. You can make sense of the limit of the S matrix of the crossing equation solves. You can imagine there are these being a different description. And then so if anything, whether that gives the same result or, or if, it's if, if anything, I would have said that the limit of the TBA, of the mixed flux TBA, should give, if anything, the long string sector, the non perturbative part that uh, you and Bogdan and Alessandro, I believe, and uh -huh. I think uh, maybe I'm forgetting uh, Bombardelli possibly. Uh, I've been working on. I think that maybe it could match with the long string spectrum, if anything, because the the, the short string spectrum is already accounted for, and that would be very interesting to see. But I think that the no, short I mean, string no, spectrum I, is look, just uh, the S matrix is, is uh, well, well, indeed, uh, the short string spectrum is governed by this S matrix. This S matrix is very well behaved as you send the parameter, the modulus, to zero, so you go to the pure Vesumino Witten point. It's a non-diagonal S matrix. The crossing relations for this S matrix, for the phases of this uh, S matrix, are also non-trivial in this limit. And so therefore, you cannot just solve them by some CDD factors. So that's just life. And that's how integrability works there. But it could be that if you 
work out what the TBA is or, or the quantum spectral curve that magically you can re-express it in terms of some very simple uh, TBA for a diagonal S matrix with a CDD factor. But that would be very, very special and it would be extremely mysterious, right? Yeah, we, we, do know what the, we do know what the S matrix is at the pure Vesemino Witten point. It is non-diagonal. We know that the crossing equation is non-trivial at the pure NSNS point. Sorry, could I propose let's finish the uh, formal part of the talk, uh, stop recording, thank the speaker, and then we can continue formally. Thank you.